Hi, I'm Nick Lucas. I'm from Lucas Candies in Havistra, New York. And today we'll be showing you how we make our candy canes for the holiday season. We are one of the oldest candy shops in New York State and actually one of the oldest in the country. So Lucas Candies was founded in 1896 by uh, two partners, one of which was my great, great uncle. It started out as a candy store and a luncheonette and it's been going ever since. It's been passed down through many generations, my great, great uncle, to my grandparents, to my parents, and now to myself and my partner. One of the products that we really are excited about is our candy canes. Back when I was a child, I used to make them with my parents. My father showed me how to make them back then, and then they kind of fell off for a while, and we hadn't made them in years. And I really wanted to bring something back, something special for our 120th anniversary. Debbie and I started discussing it, and I said, let's do candy canes. We do them live in the store, we do a demonstration, and it's a really cool thing to see. We uh, used the original recipe from 100 years ago, but had to refine it a bit for modern times. So to make candy canes, the beginning of the process is we take three simple ingredients. Sugar, corn syrup, and water. They are put together into our candy mixer and heated up. We also add cream of tartar, which changes the acidity of the sugar to make it a little bit more pliable. The sugar is mixed and heated to a temperature of 315 degrees. When it finally reaches that temperature, we take the kettle off the machine and have to pour it onto our cooling table. The sugar is split into two distinct parts. One's gonna become the red part of the candy cane, the other's gonna become the white part of the candy cane. We separate them, the red part gets some coloring. It is an oil-based color so that the coloring does not evaporate from the hot sugar. The white part gets the peppermint oil to give it that unique candy cane flavor. We start cooling and manipulating the sugar to get it to the right consistency. It needs to be almost like a Play-Doh consistency so that it can be formed and molded into the candy cans. And the way you do it is you keep flipping it and pulling it and stretching it on the table to get it to that right temperature and form. When both pieces of sugar are at the right consistency, the red part goes to the heat box to keep warm, while the white part, which doesn't look very white at the moment, needs to be aerated to get the white color out. The sugar gets pulled on a hook 75 times to get the right consistency and the right depth of the white color. Every time you pull the sugar, you capture little air bubbles. The air bubbles work as little mirrors that reflect the light back and it makes the sugar look whiter and whiter and whiter. When Debbie thinks the white part is white enough, then I bring it over to her and she sets up the loaf to make the traditional uh, red and white candy cane stripes. The loaves are put together and kept warm in our heat box. The sugar is then pulled, stretched, and twisted till it gets to the right consistency and thickness, and then it is cut. So at the beginning, the sugar isn't really the right consistency yet, so we use this old candy cutter from 1909 to make little peppermint pieces. The final result is our beautiful handmade candy canes, which are generally a lot larger than your traditional candy canes that you'll find in different stores. The reason they're this big is Debbie has a childhood memory of Santa Claus coming around on a fire truck and giving out candy canes to the kids. And in Debbie's memory, they were really big candy canes. So when we started designing how we were gonna make our candy canes, she said, I want fireman candy canes. And of course my response was, what is a fireman candy cane? Then she showed me and I went, well, okay, well, that's what we're gonna do. So they are uh, quite large and quite unique. Every candy cane is different because they are made by hand. Each batch of candy canes yields around 100 candy canes. 
and we will sell several thousand over the holiday season. So we'll be making many, many batches of candy canes over the next couple weeks. One of our other unique products is our craft beer brittle. Debbie and I were discussing other old candies that we could bring back. And peanut brittle is one of those products that you really don't find very much anymore. But we went to our old recipe book and found the original peanut brittle recipe. And we had the idea to try to cook the brittle with different kinds of craft beer. To make peanut brittle, you start with sugar and corn syrup solids, and in our case, beer. It is cooked together. When it reaches 240 degrees, you add raw peanuts. The peanuts actually roast in the sugar and cook while the sugar is reaching the right temperature. So each batch of peanut brittle uses 12 pounds of peanuts, which is, I have no idea how many actual peanuts, I didn't count them. So right at the end, we toss in some butter solids, a little extra beer, and baking soda and salt. The mixture is poured on our cooling table and spread and stretched and gotten to the right thickness. The slabs are cut and flipped and cooled. It's ready, we crack it, and it's ready to go. We sell our brittle in uh, beer cans because, well, it's made with craft beer, so why not? At Lucas Candies, we always try to uphold the traditions and the look and style of the past because we've been here so long, but we still have to keep modernizing and keep innovating. So our newest addition is our beer and wine tasting room where we have craft beer and some unique wines and we pair them with our different confections and chocolates and candies. You really have to come down and try it. It's like nothing you've ever seen before. So this is our final products. We're pairing the peanut brittle with a coffee stout and the candy canes with a Prosecco. Deb and I do everything together. We figure out all the recipes, all the pairings, all the procedures. Deb and I are a really good team. Is that true, Deb? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching how we make our unique confections. We loved sharing that with you. If you want to come down and visit us, we are in Havistro, New York or you can always go online at lucascandies.com. So happy holidays and I hope to see you soon. Bye.